I'm giving somebody the blues today. I understand that you have to make a game more accessible so more people can come in and play the game, but I always talk about how there's a line in the sand. Once you cross it, it's over. Just look at the Call of Duty genre right now. People hate the newest one with a passion, and that's because not only did they cross that sand, but they are not coming back. Now, I've been defending a lot of the shenanigans they've been doing. You know, they have that little simple box that pops up on the screen. The whole Kazia having an easier electric in a devil form. Now with this law thing, right, DSS. I had to do some research and really understand what this was because I'm not a law player. I play Yoshi, so I really don't understand how complicated this character was, and I really didn't understand that he had this tool. After doing a little bit of research, I understand what main man and also Rip is so up in arms about. So that's why, did you have to do this to law? With hard work, the character completely changes. And now the distinction is gone. They even had to nerf a character to appease the new reality of anyone can now do this stuff. This is horrible. Why? The one sentence that I want to read, it says, I'm afraid Tekken 8 is the product of the developers misreadings Tekken 7's popularity. And I think this is such a fascinating sentence because I kind of think this is what the developers are doing. When Tekken 7 came out, it sold 3 million copies in two months. Harada said they made all the money back from development at that point in time. That was years ago. So they went from 3 million copies to 10 million copies. That all is profit. And then also the DLC characters, all profit. They made so much money off of this game. And of course with Tekken 8, they want to repeat that. So how do you repeat the success? You look at what made the game successful in the first place. I would contribute a lot of Tekken 7 success to the community. I think tournaments and also content creators and also commentators is what really made Tekken 7 what it is, which I think what, they, what they're doing, the way they're going about Tekken 8 is perfect. They're getting a lot of the community involved, early access, interviews. They understand that, ex that aspect. They're also tying the alphas to tournaments. They're, they understand that aspect of Tekken 7 was successful because of the community. But where I think they're, they are messing up is in the actual game itself. We can't see all of the statistics. We can't see all of the data. We can see some stuff like popularity on Steam, win rates in arcades. We could attribute the changes with Kazuya to his low win rate on Steam. We can attribute the changes to Devil Gen to his low win rate on Steam. We think the Tekken 7 community is like all hardcore players, but you guys have to realize Tekken Tag Tournament 2 sold 2 million copies. When Tekken 7 came out, it sold 3 million copies. That is the hardcore player base. That other 7 million, I don't want to say that they're not hardcore because so much time has passed, but I live stream and I play with a lot of people, a lot of you guys, right? And this is something that I realized, like a lot of you guys, you, you, you started playing Tekken 7, whether it's a day, a month, a year, two years ago, and you guys play often, but you just can't compete with someone like me and some of the other people who's been playing for years and you get bodied. And I think what they're trying to do in Tekken 8 is eliminate that. Tekken 7 brought in this massive player base and I think with laws changed to the DDS and then the electric and who knows what else has changed, right? They're trying to make the, the audience that they gathered in Tekken 7 more deadly in Tekken 8. And it's obvious because they do it with the DLC. They do it with how they buff and nerf characters. I always gotta go back to what Michael Murray and Harada said. You know, it's very easy for the community to complain about things like balance or things yeah, like where yeah. the game add and, and, and content for the game. Yeah. But you have to understand that balance is not just about the competitive side, it's about sales. It's also about bringing in new people. The change to law is exactly that. That is what they were saying. Like, I, I don't know, man. I, I get they want to bring in new players and, you know, eliminate the skill gap, but they have to understand that, like, if they do that, bro, it's, it's not going to end the way that they think. There's no way you can eliminate the skill gap as in everyone who's been playing Tekken 
for all this time is going to be happy with it. I understand that you have to make a game easier. I understand that you have to bring in new people and you have to some things in a game is unnecessarily hard. I think a lot of characters rage drives was unnecessarily difficult to input, which is why they removed rage drives. I understand what they're doing, but it's like, I remember like a year and a half ago, I used to make videos like these where I just would rant about Tekken and I kind of stopped all that and started focusing on lore. But now I feel like I'm the one who's just happy talking about all this stuff. And when I look around at other content creators, they're angry about something. It's odd to see everyone angry. And this law change, um, it's, a, it's a good reason to be angry. It's a good reason to be angry. So I don't know. Hopefully they fix it. Hopefully Harala, Michael Murray, they see all the reactions, all the videos, all the comments, Reddit post, everything, and they change it. They don't have to change everything with law. But just fixing the DSS, you know, that's a that's a simple thing they could change it and boom, everyone goes on with their day. Thank you, Harada, right? Hopefully it doesn't come to like a apocalypse scenario where Harada's like, no, we're dying on this hill and we're not doing it. But that's going to be it for this video. Um, thank you all for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.